Hey guys, um, this is Matthew, and before I start this video, I just want to say that um, I'm sorry that I haven't posted a gear video in a long time. I have been getting a lot of stuff, and this is where I enter my studio slash dining room. So if you just open, just, and you just come in here, and I'll start with my base amp, which I just got. It's the Fender Rumble. 25 um and just look at the settings right here basically this amp is pretty sweet okay so if you ever want to look for like a great starter amp i would suggest the 15 or the 25 rumble so i'm just gonna say that is so great okay we're just gonna walk over here and i'm just gonna show you my new base that i got it's the squire by fender um Affinity uh, P bass, which is a mix with P and J. Um, so it's a P, B, and J basically because it's a P, a punk, or whatever you want to call it, and then a um, bass, and then a jazz. So it's like half jazz and half punk, or whatever you want to call it. I have no idea. And now we'll walk over to my drum set, which is the make. Pex, uh, I don't know. I've had this for a super long time. Mapex Voyager. I barely use it. Um, so, I whenever my friend, like my drummer, comes over to jam with me, usually this is what he uses. I have a Stag um, DH Crash. I have a um, a block LP block, and basically that is um, uh, what's it called? It is for, uh, I don't know, just it's for fun. And there's a cowbell, of course, what Will Ferrell uses. And we got a pearl double bass right there. So now moving on to, of course, my pedal board. I um, still have the same pedal board. I will be getting a trailer trash, which is um, gonna I'm going to design over the weekday. But I'm right now I'm going to leave like in a few hours to New York, taking a red eye. So I probably won't be available for another week or two. So basically, this is my setup. Starts with the RC2 looper. Um, oops, sorry, my foot. Um, and then it is all done by patch cables, by the way. And then this is my um, my uh, MXR my ramp. Um, it goes into there, and then it comes all the way into the big muff. I barely use this pedal, but it's awesome when you have the right settings. I wouldn't suggest these settings. I'd always suggest that the tone is a tiny bit more than the sustain because the sustain just makes it way too fuzzy. Um, then the big muff goes into the Turbo Distortion DS2 by Boss. This is Firebar, fi fi bar, <laughs> by far my favorite distortion. Um, so I would highly recommend it if you get it, if you want to play some Frusciante. Then it comes into my Ibanez WH10 V2. It's the uh, version two of the Wah. It is not the um, it is not the original because that that one would cost a lot more. So yeah, this is awesome. Here, let me show you the settings on the side. It's just all the way up, and it's not on bass. Of course, uh, only a few songs that he's done is on the bass setting. I'm not sure. I think it's Naked in the Rain. I'm not sure. Then it comes all the way over into, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know where it's going. Oh yeah, it goes to my Holy Grail Nano. Basically I got scammed off of Amazon. Yeah, this is supposed to be in spring. I got scammed on Amazon because um it was supposed to be the regular. And I would put it right here. But it was the Nano. Um, So yeah, I'm like, I don't care. I don't, I don't even want to deal with this. So yeah. Then that goes into, let's see where this goes into, oh wait, no, right here. Um, this goes into my Bossy One Chorus, my favorite pedal. It's a vintage, you won't find it being manufactured anymore. Hang on, let me just sit down real quick. Um, these are my settings. Yeah, and then it's on, um, it's on, it's not on stereo, it's on mono. The stereo is a little too wavy for me, if you know what I mean. It doesn't really give you a depth. It just gives you a, a sweep. Uh, no, just a rate, and that's about it. So, yeah. And the best shot of getting one, um, 
would be off of eBay or uh, or Craigslist. I got this one off of Craigslist and I got it for super cheap because the guy had no idea what it costed. It was actually 300 bucks for me, but usually these will run you around 600. So yeah. Um, and then this goes into, uh, let's see, it goes into my phase 90. I usually set this right at the lowest or the highest setting. Um, and yeah, so I would usually use this at the highest setting for Danny California. And then all the way back here would be um, for a throw away your television. Um, for Danny California, I'd probably, I'd just use it all the way up here for the bridge, which is, you know, I don't know. I didn't have this in the making of mine, so, um, yeah, I used this with the chorus, and it sounded fine, you know, it wasn't the best, but, you know, it was, it was fine. So, now, coming out of the phase 90, it would go into the line 6 FM4. I can't really show you, like, which ones I have, like, what my settings are, but I know that this one's Obi-Wa, um, then this one, I have no, I think it's Voice Box, and then this one is, like, Throbber, and this one's, like, Comet Trails or Spin Cycle, I'm not sure. And then, for the final pedal, it goes into the MXR Dynacomp. Of course, my sensitivity will be all the way up, because you really need that pop for the Nick Ware slash, um, John Frusciante slash Buckley slash Hendrix tone. <laughs> so, yeah. And all, and these two, um, cables are the Monster Cables, which I, I love, um, but they usually break like a lot if you drop them like a few times. So just one, just letting you know. So this one's a 90 degree, and then this is a straight. So so I can just like you know I don't know. And then these two are just straight. And this goes into the one that I just got, which is the Marshall JCM 2000 Dual Super LED. I just got this for Hanukkah like a few days ago, and. I love it. It's amazing. Um, this is my Marshall I used to have. It was a, I don't know, oh yeah, MG100 HGFX. Um, so, yeah, this is a pretty good amp. It's a good starter amp um, if you ever have, like, a little more money than you can spend. If you, like, oh, I don't know. This is really difficult for me to explain. But these are my settings that I used to have. I used the overdrive channel and then just turned down the gain a lot and it just sounded great. But now I use, uh, let's show, let me show you. I use, this is a tube amp by the way. I use my volume and I use this channel, channel A, and these are my settings. So those two. And then it goes in, I don't use any reverb since I have the holy grail. I just use the equalization. And yeah. And my presence is all the way up. Bass is all the way up, and let me make sure that these are all the way up. Mid is usually a little, like, almost three quarters. So, yeah, and then the tone shift, um, let's see if that's in. No, that, yeah, that's in. So, I don't know what that does, but it just sounds better. Then I have it deep, so it has more in depth, if you know what I mean by that. So, yeah, this is also in classic gain. Um, so now I will show you my recording equipment and then my guitars. I already showed you my bass. So this is the Shure SM57 uh, dynamic microphone. I don't use the dampener on it, just or the sponge or whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, this is just really good. I love it. Um, and that's all I have to say because this gives you real the best quality you can. This is even what Frusciante uses. So. If you ever want something that's pretty cheap, and I just gave you an idea for Christmas, there you go. Approved by Matthew. Should have like a little like pfft, approved by Matthew like intro thing. If anyone can make it, then you know that'd just be great. <laughs> Let me just throw that right back there. And I usually take it and I put it in the center, and get usually a lower, like just facing a little more down, just so I can get more of a deeper tone. If you know what I mean by that. Then it goes into my Lexicon Alpha. Um, so this I use, and then it, um, my microphone goes into here. And then this is a USB power. I just put it into my Asus uh, computer, like a laptop. And then this is my headset, he headphones, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then I just 
you know, I don't know. Just, I don't need to show you that. And then it goes in, and I used to use Lexicon. I don't know, not Lexicon. Cubase LE5. But, um, sadly, I sort of lost the file. So I just use Audacity, and it's just fine. Uh, people would totally disagree with me, but, you know. Whatever works, works. Wait, how was I holding the camera? Yeah, this will work. Okay, so this is my Fender Stratocaster 2013 edition. <laughs> I don't even think I should call you edition. I'm just going to say two. it was made in 2013. Um, yeah, so this is my Fender Stratocaster. I love it. It's my favorite. I did replace it with um, Seymour Duncan's uh, 50s. I'll, I'll put it in the uh, description. Uh, so, yeah. And then this is the very first guitar I got serious with, like, to play guitar. It's the Ibanez Micro, Micro? I think Micro, since it's a bit smaller. And everyone who's saying that I play a mini guitar, let me show you the size difference. Of a micro guitar. So, this is a micro guitar. That's the Fender Stratocaster. So, anyone that says that I'm playing a micro guitar, you can just go away, because... As you can see, or mini guitar, whatever you want to call it, because anyone who says that, they're just being a troll. They're they're just I don't know, but I did get this for around five hundred bucks. It's because I traded in my uh my Epiphone Les Paul for it, and then my Fender Mexican Jaguar. Yeah. Okay. So now what do I do? Oh yeah. Hang on. Oh, well, I left that one over there, but you can see it in the other video. So, I'm just going to go and... I'm going to go like this. So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll leave everything in the description below for, like, if you guys want to see it. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to see another gear tour in the future, fu future, um, please let me know. And also, my snake isn't here today because I sent him to my friend's house to, to be taken care of. So, yeah. Uh, that's about it. See you guys later. Bye.